All right, popping the grain. We're making a mess. Camel Girl's like, that's a little too complicated of a title. I said, I can't separate it. You know, many years ago, I say many, I don't know. I did a little thing, and I was talking about enhancing grains. And somebody else on the internet got a hold to it. So they go out and they start doing some kind of thing, and they're popping the grain. And it goes viral all over the internet. And in finishing classes, emails, and you name it, I have been asked, how do I pop the grain? Well, the first thing you got to know is you got to have something to pop. Um, Basically, what it amounts to is using an oil or a finish to make the grain stand out more. You can't enhance something that's not there. That simple. You know, you can take this piece of pine right here, and no matter what you do to it, it's still a piece of pine. We can color it. We can glaze it. But that's not gonna that's not gonna change the grain in it. It is what it is. When you put a clear finish on anything, you create a prism effect that enhances it, that draws your attention to it. I mean everybody out here you know, the minute a finish goes on something, you know, it brings it to life. Getting enough finish on, that's a big factor. Keeping it clear, keeping it clean. I'm not, I'm not creating a, you know, again, it's kind of like laying a piece of glass over it. It gives you depth. And of course, the sheen is going to further enhance it. If you take this piece of, this is just a piece of red oak plywood. Yeah, you know, if you put a stain on this within the in the deep gut, here, here's a little bit of dye sitting here. Let me just do it. Should have been a doctor. I've gotten good at these gloves now that I've been, huh? She said, you mean now that you've actually been wearing them? Mm. You know, in this piece of red oak, if we put a stain or a dye or whatever on it, because we've got a coarse grain, the dye is going to get into the deeper grain and the recess is there and it's going to make it darker. It makes, you know, the stain is going to make the grain more prominent. This piece of pine ain't gonna do ain't gonna do anything. Again, we can color it, but that's and we can get a good finish on it. That's about it. On the other hand, if we take something like this block of tiger maple, we can enhance that. Now the reason we can enhance, pop it, if you will, is because we've got that soft grain inside of there that we can get extra finish into. Again, increasing that prism effect. Amen. Sorry. Now, 
And what's happening is that is that the soft grain in this is absorbing more of the oil and it's causing it to pop. Now I'm using a uh, seal of cell here. Seal of cell has a little bit of an amber tint to it and that really seems to help on your figured maples and things to pop it. But Now here's a little piece of maple that's, I put some seal cell on, let it dry, gave it a scuff. Now the minute that clear finish hits it, can I get that? There I am. Not much difference. Here's one that has nothing on it. Now what I'm showing you here is how once you got the seal of cell and you let it dry and you come back with a finish over top of it, it does make a difference. You're getting a more of a holographic effect there. You're getting that, you're increasing that chatoyance. I can, here's the same thing, same piece of wood, and I've got a little bit of shellac here. This is a blonde shellac. Now this has got a whole lot less figure than this one. <clears throat> so what am I telling you? The oils do help pop the grain. And I do like the seal cell. There's two reasons. One, I like that little hammer tint to it. The second thing I like is it dries. It dries hard, it dries firm. Um, once it's dry, I can put a water-based finish over it. But the number one product that has been elected to be used for popping the grain and I apologize already for the can. It's kind of scrungy looking. It's been around for years and years and years because we don't use it. Um, to say I dislike it would kind of be an understatement. And the reason I don't like it is because it's so slow to dry. And it's a very, very weak finish. It's cheap. And as I've often said, it's cheap. One of the things, I mean, you can look here on top. It, this has been, this is years. I mean, it's set here and it's still like a rubber band. It's still gummy, gooey. I mean, there you go. There it is. I mean, it's just nothing here. I mean, it's just kind of like rubber. It also yellows. To understand what I'm trying to get through to you, I like the seal of cell for the reasons I stated. I also like the armor seal, the Formby's tongue oil, even the Minwax poly oil. They do well because they dry, they get hard, and they don't take forever to do it. Now I'm gonna explain something, 
and this has to do more with warming the wood and this is what we're going to look at in minutes where we call what we're going to talk about making a mess any solvent product reacts with the tannins in the wood um, when we get in the oil finishes and whatever you'll see most of these oils are just totally clear they add very very little color to it but the chemicals in the oils react again with the tannins in the wood as do all solvents lacquers shellac they all react and that helps give that kind of amber warming effect to it the slower it dries the more you get let me show you Like I told you, we're not telling you anything we think. We're telling you what we've proven. If you look right here, now you may find this attractive. This is boiled linseed oil. And you notice how much darker it is on this cherry. It just took that much longer for it to dry. If we look at the Danish oil over here, we see the same thing. Why is that? Because Danish, the base of Danish oil is boiled linseed oil. But if you look, all of the oils, here's a gel top coat, here's Babelin's Rock Hard, Master Gel, Minwax Wipe on Poly, Form Bees, on down it goes. You know, there's, I don't think you, I, I hear people say it, I don't think you could take boiled linseed oil or Danish oil and it would ever dry enough that I'd even begin to put a water base over it they'd put a coat of shellac over it. Then we went through and we did a little testing. Same products. See the boiled linseed oil? We could just take our fingers and literally just scratch it off. It was, it was so soft. It's pretty much the same thing with the Danish oil. Now, so what am I talking about when I'm talking about making a mess? If you've got a big cherry table and you put an oil on it, it's going to blotch it. And what you're seeing here is again within the, while cherry, maples, whatever, within the confines of those, that wood, you've got hard and soft grain. And what's going to happen, that oil is going to migrate into the soft grain. And it's going to, you know, more of it's going into the soft grain than what's going to stay on the hard grain. And it's going to set there and react more, so it's going to blotch it. That's pretty much what you have here. Now, in the case of this, there's a little, there's a knot here with a little bit of crotch showing right there. So it's actually not too overly bad. But you get this out here on a flat piece of big cherry tabletop, whatever, you can just make a mess. And once that oil's in there and it's absorbed in there, kind of tough. So how can you pop the grain on cherry? You just simply put a nice coat of finish on it and call it a day. Let the cherry age naturally. Same thing with a hard maple. You don't have anything there to enhance. So you can't. A quilted maple, oh yeah, you can make that just scream. Anything's got a curl, anything's got a figure to it, you can enhance. But again, like a cherry, even curly cherry, you know, the, the curly cherry's got a bigger, broader um, curl than what a curly maple does. The only thing curly ch maple is, and what it, it, it's a blotch. It just happens to be a very attractive one. And that's something we can enhance. Um, but you can't take a piece of straight grain mahogany and make it any prettier than what it than what a good finish is going to put on it. You can you can put a little oil on it, which will help to warm it up a little bit. But by the same token, putting some shellac on it or any solvent base is going to do the same thing. Water base isn't going to do that. One of my favorite tricks is to you know get do whatever I'm going to do. If I'm going natural, I'll shoot a light coat of shellac on it 
Then I come back with my water baits. The shellac is providing my warming solvent reaction thing. Um, and I move right on. That's the way we do it. You, again, you just can't pop what's not there. In the South, we got an expression. You can't make a silk purse out of a pig's ear. It's holds true.